lot of trolling, whether it be for striped bass or even offshore for uh, tuna. And I get a lot of use out of the Garmin uh, autopilot. Close up of it right there. Uh, right now I'm in heading home. Uh, but one thing I wanted to show is how you could use uh, an iOS device, an iPhone, an iPad or something uh, to control or to navigate the boat uh, remote. Here you'll see I have uh, extended my autopilot onto my Garmin screen. I go to AV controls, hit autopilot, and that shows up on one of my screens. And then I'm gonna pull up on my phone the Active Captain app. And it's searching. Uh, it's telling me to connect to the Use the Active Captain app. You have to connect to the Wi Fi uh, that you set up on your Garmin devices. Then I'll go to Active Captain. Go to Apps. And I'll go to Helm. And you'll see on the Helm there, there's two screens. Starboard, my starboard screen, I've named it, and the port screen. Oh. And you could, whatever's on that screen, you could actually interact with from your phone. So it says uh, I'm on a heading hold of 270 degrees. If I want to go one degree starboard, I could hit that button. And I'm actually through the wi Garmin Wi Fi altering the course of the boat. Um, this is kind of helpful if you're just sitting maybe in the bow seats talking with folks, um, but to control it while trolling and trying to fish yourself from the cell phone is a little difficult. This, the phone's, you know, obviously small. The buttons are small and hard to interact with, especially if you're bouncing around at all. So, uh, one thing that you could do, take an iPad instead of an iPhone, and you'll see, uh, you know, because of all the extra real estate we have on this screen, it's actually much easier to interact with the buttons and change your direction, steer the boat so that we don't hit this ferry. Um, very useful. Now, when you're you can see here, I mounted the iPad to the underside of the hardtop. Uh, where it's accessible from the uh, cockpit of the boat. Uh, this was helpful for me when solo fishing uh, because I could just reach up here and navigate uh, around other traffic while I was fighting a fish. So I found this pretty useful. Um, the only thing I didn't care for, oh, a couple things. Uh, the iPad will run out of power if it's not plugged in. The constant Wi-Fi uh, data transfer is kind of too much for a day of fishing, so you definitely want to plug it in. And then you need to make sure you don't have uh, too short. You, you turn the auto lock completely off on the, on the device. If it locks up, uh, you're going to lose, obviously you'll lose interaction with the app, but you may also lose your connection to the Garmin Wi-Fi, and then you'll have to reset that, so that's kind of a pain in the neck. So just turn device uh, auto locked off and use a cord and plug the device in. So my, my one pet peeve about using this while, while free, you know, um, basically the cost, I already had the iPad, um, it, re it relies on you having one of the screens up on having uh, the device you want to control up on one of the screens. And I'd rather not waste the whole screen with the autopilot. I know you could do split screen, but then you're compromising your real estate uh, for, for two mechanisms. I'd prefer to have my sonar up on the starboard. This is typically how uh, I like to fish. And we can see we have a huge uh, pot of bunker here. Um, Maybe some stripers or uh, look like small fish. Could be more bunker. 
it just broke off in there. Anyway, I uh, like to have the two screens and not use one of them up for the autopilot in order for that to work. So I was complaining to uh, a Garmin rep about that. I said, boy, I really wish you guys had a remote control. And lo and behold, they actually do. So I'm going to turn this on. And we're going to say, oh. Okay, and I've already pre-connected this in the settings. Maybe you can tr uh, communications, wireless devices, uh, wireless remotes, autopilot remote. So I already have this device paired in the autopilot section. Now, I can use the remote, and it comes with a lan lanyard, have it around my neck while I'm fighting a fish, and it allows me to utilize the same controls that are on my Garmin device without using up one of the screens. So you can see I've got my chart on the one screen, I have my sonar on the other, and this is connecting through the network you can see it's reading the same heading and heading hold setting that I have right now. I'm going to hit uh, this button to the right. It will make me go one degree starboard. There's two degrees. And these fast forward buttons will uh, give me 10 degrees. So turning the boat. 10 degrees at a time, which this is really helpful. If you're in the cockpit fighting a fish, uh, you could use this. Now you could also use some presets, program these presets in order to utilize some of the other turning functions in the autopilot. Um, the one I like to use is the circle. And I've set that to button one. And you can see it's a circle and then I just have to press the direction and I press the starboard circle. And the reason I like to use the circle instead of the U-turn is I can program the circle time. And you can see my circle time is 15 minutes. I really only wanted a U-turn. I don't want to drive in a circle, but uh, half of that 15 minutes, uh, the seven minutes to turn around a U-turn is enough to keep my line straight. Um, or at least when trolling uh, for striped bass at three miles an hour. Sometimes I like to use the circle instead of pulling in the lines and and just doing a, a U-turn. It saves me from pulling, you know, four or five lines in all by myself. Five people on the boat, I just have them reel in all the lines, help me reel in the lines uh, and turn the boat around. But I always use the circle function and pull a U-turn. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you and tight lines.